zero. Hey everybody, Mr. MathBlog here. This lesson is multiplying decimals, so hopefully this is a review for some. If not, we'll get through it, no problem. Don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. So when you go to MrMathBlog.com, don't forget to go to the Facebook page and like uh, me on Facebook. That would be super cool. And then uh, this is uh, sixth grade California, you guys. So don't pick this sixth grade math here. That's for the rest of the nation. California is kind of strange, so at least... Uh, different anyway. So if you go to uh, sixth grade California and scroll down, it'll be placed right underneath here as soon as we get done with that. Okay, let's get going here. So here's our common core strand for our teachers. And our question here basically is how do we multiply decimals? Okay, so a quick uh, review. I always forget what's a row versus a column, you guys. Rows go horizontal like this and columns go vertical like this. And a student once told me I think students have come up with great ideas. They just said, think of a Colosseum. Colosseums have these columns that are going up and down that hold them. So that's how I know what's a row and what's a column. Okay, so we're going to use decimal grids. So this is a decimal grid right here. This represents hundredths right here because there's a hundred squares right here. So this is three tenths and this is five tenths right here okay or thirty one hundredths and fifty one hundredths right there we're going to use the decimal grids and then the next one we're going to use an area model to find each product okay so here we're going to go ahead and uh, do uh, point, uh, zero 0.03 which is three tenths times five tenths and then so three tenths times five tenths is the same as um, uh, point 0.3 of point 0.5 so let's first uh, shade five rows of um, uh, five rows of this decimal grid right here to represent uh, 0.5. Okay, so we're going to shade this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one right here. And I shaded that in red or pink or whatever color you want to call that right there. And then uh, now we're going to shade three columns to represent uh, 0.3. So we'll shade this column, this column, and this column right here. Okay, so there's uh, three tenths shaded in blue right there. So uh, the area that is double shaded, which is these little 15 squares right here. Here's 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. There's 15 squares right here. The area that is double shaded, it represents uh, 0.3 of 0.5 right there. Okay, so here's 0.5, all of this area right here. So Point 0.3 of that is just this little piece right here. So there's 15 squares that are double shaded. So, so this represents uh, 15 hundredths, and 15 hundredths is 0.15. There's the tenths, there's the hundredths right there. So 0.3 times 0.5 is 0.15 right there, or 15 hundredths right there, okay? All right, so here we're going to represent uh, 3.2 times 2.1 in this area model right here. So here the large squares represent holes right here. So here is one, two, three holes right here. And the small rectangles, this small rectangle and this small re rectangle, represent tenths right here. So this says one, two, three, and one, two tenths or 3.2 or 3 and 2 tenths okay right here this is uh, 1 square 2 square and 1 tenth so 2.1 or 2 2 and 1 tenth right there and then these little guys right here represent uh, hundredths right here okay so what this uh, model represents is there are how many holes are there there's one two three four five six there's six holes how many tenths are there well there's one tenth two and there's two more down here so there's four see how there's one rectangle two rectangle three four five six seven there's seven tenths rectangles right there and then how many hundredths are there there's these little hundredths squares right there there's two of them right there so this is six holes which is six point seventy two okay so three point two times two point one is six point seven two right there okay or six and seventy two hundredths right there all right so how are the products of three point two and two point one the same or alike and uh, uh, with uh, thirty two and twenty one so three point two times two point one How's that alike with 32 times 21, and how are they different? Okay, well, they have the same digits right there, but the decimal point changes their value. We just found out that 3.2 times 2.1 is 6.72. 32 times 21, I did that down here using the distributive property. 32 is 30 plus 2. 21 is 20 plus 1. So if we did 
30 times 20, well, 3 times 2 is 6, and since there's a 0 and a 0, it's 6 with two zeros. 30 times 1 is this 30. Can you see I did, here's my blue arrow, so I got these blue numbers. Down here we did the green arrow, so 2 times 20 is 40, and then 2 times 1 is uh, 2. So 600 plus 30 plus 40 plus 2 is 672, okay? That's one way. We're not going to do it that way right there, but that's a, a quick sort of visual way using the distributive property. So when we're multiplying decimals, we can first multiply as we would with whole numbers. So just multiply like we normally would. And then place the decimal point in the answer, in the product, okay? All right, and so what, how we do that is the number of the decimal places in the product, it's going to equal the sum of the number of the decimal places in the factor. And okay, and you're thinking, what does that mean? Okay, well, okay, we just talked about 32 times 21 is 672. 3.2 times 21, notice there's one decimal place over here. So we move the, it's the same numbers right there, but we move the decimal over one place. So it'll be 67.2. Okay, here, um, 3.2 times 2.1. Well, we did that in the beginning of this lesson is 6.72. Here's one decimal place. Here's one decimal place, so that means two decimal places, so we take that 672 and go two places. If we had this, here is two decimal places right here. Here is one decimal place, so those add up to three decimal places, so it's the same as this number right here, but we take that decimal and we move it three places that way, okay? And that's how we multiply decimals. So let's try that here. So Kirk bought 3.8 pounds of peaches, and the peaches cost $1.99 per pound. What was the total cost of Kirk's uh, peaches right there? I just bought some today at a uh, uh, local grocery store. Yum, yum. I love them. They look just like this, too. So it's uh, July right now, so they're in bloom right now, or they're in season right now, and they're just uh, delicious anyways. <laughs> Sorry. So let's go ahead and multiply right here. Let's count the decimals. Here's two decimals. Here's one decimal right here. So we're going to add those up, and that's going to give us three decimal places. So we're going to multiply 199 times 38. Whatever answer that is, at the end, we move it over three places to the left. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply. So that's what this is. We're going to multiply. Let's multiply the 8 through first. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, 8 times 9 is 72. We carry that 7 right there. So there's the 2 right there. And then 8 times 9 is 72 again, plus 7 is 79. Carry the 7. 8 times 1 is 8, plus that 7 is 15. All right, now we're going to multiply the 3 through. But first, when we multiply the 3 through, we've got to carry the 0. Do you remember that trick right there? And now we'll go ahead and multiply the 3 through. So when we multiply the 3 through, 3 times 9 is 27. Carry that 2. Can you see it hiding up there? And then 3 times, so there's the 7 right there for the 27. And then 3 times this 9 is 27, but plus this 2 right there is 29. So there's the 9. Carry the 2. 3 times uh, uh, th uh, 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, okay? Now we're going to go ahead and add those partial products up right here. So let's add these up right there. And when we add those up, we get that. And now we move the decimal place three places to the left. So there it is. It's right there. It's going to move three places to the left right there. So 1, 2, 3 takes us to that. Now let's answer the question. The peaches cost how much? And so when we're talking about dollar amounts, we always round this to the hundredths spot. So it's going to be 7.56, and this 2 is going to make that stay a 6 right there. So $7.56. That's how much Kirk paid for that. Okay, all right, so how can we use estimation to check that we have placed the decimal point in the correct position in the product? Okay, so here's our problem. We did $1.99 times 3.8 gave us $7.56 right there. Well, what we can do is round the $1.99 to $2 and round the 3.8 to $4, and so we multiply 2 times 4 gives us 8. So we know our answer is going to be close to 8, and 7.56 is close to 8. So if we rounded it in the wrong spot, we would have got $75.62 or $756.20 or $0.76. Cents. But by estimating, we know it's going to be close to 8. So the $7.56 is our closest one right there. All right, so we're going to use estimation to check our reasonableness of our answer. So in example one, we use estimation to check whether the decimal point was placed correctly in the product. Okay, so we can also use our estimation to check that our answer is reasonable. All right, so here's just same thing, you guys. John noticed that a sunflower has grown 3.75, whoops, that should say inches, 
inches per uh, week right there. Darn, darn it. And C-H-E-S. Oops, and it's bold and everything. All right. So anyway, so uh, inches per week. So if the sunflower continues to grow at this rate, how much will it grow in uh, 6.25 weeks? Let's go ahead and float that up there. All right. And sorry about this. I, I email these lessons to all my fellow colleagues in my district. So I'm just, while I, before I forget, I, I do that. Okay, so we're going to multiply, you guys. 3.75 times 6.25, okay? First, let's count the decimals, okay? All right, so there's um, uh, two decimals and then two more decimals, and so two and two gives us four decimals. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 375 times 625, and at the end, we'll move that decimal over four places to the left right there, okay? So here we go. Let's go ahead and multiply. Multiply the five through, we get 1875. Now we'll multiply the two through. Now when we multiply the two through, you guys, don't forget to carry the zero down. And now I'll multiply the two through and we get um, uh, 750 right there with the extra zero. Now I'll multiply the six through, okay? So there's two zeros for the, this is in the hundredth spot, so we put the two zeros down. And then we multiply the, uh, the six through. And now we'll add up those partial products right there. And when we add up those partial products, we get uh, that big old fat number. This reads 234,375. Now remember, we've got to move that decimal over four places to the to the left right there. So let's go ahead and move that decimal over four places. It's right there. One, two, three, four. So 23.4375. Okay, so that's the answer right there. Let's answer that question in the context of the problem. So the grass will grow 23.475 inches in 6.25 weeks right there. All right, so let's estimate uh, to check whether the answer is reasonable. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Did a little bit too much pasting right there. So let's round 3.75 inches to the nearest whole number. Okay, that's going to be 4 inches. And round 6.25 to the nearest whole number. Well, 6.25 rounds to 6. So we'll multiply the whole numbers, 4 times 6. That's going to give us 24. And since uh, our answer, 24, our answer is 23.4375, is close to our estimation, then we got to know our answer is reasonable with that. All right, you guys, I hope you're having a great year, and be nice to your math teacher. Take care.